I've decided to take the situation and be the best person I could be. I know that I caused so much pain to Miss Evans, Danielle, and Courtney, and I will be forever in debt to you and Mr. Evans. My number one goal when I go home, talk to kids, juveniles, go to juvenile detention centers, boys and girls clubs, so I can reach them, so I may change their lives so they don't go down the same path I went down. I am not that same 19-year-old kid that I was. I am a better man due to everything I've learned since I've been incarcerated. This is a parole board hearing for Justin Young, where at the age of 19, he was drinking and driving and he killed someone. Well, the victim's wife and daughters are advocating for him today at his parole hearing to get him released out early. Now, what I found interesting is that the parole board member, Mr. Um, Keith Jones, has admitted to being an alcoholic and he's a parole board member. So just take a listen to this um, and hear his story about how he's a recovering alcoholic. Mr. Kelsey, this is the case for Justin Young at the state police barracks. Barrett. 490512. Okay. This morning we have uh, victims here and they are actually in support of Mr. Young. A victim's name is Terry Evans. Also at her location with her, she has um, Danielle and Courtney Evans who are there at the same location. Uh, Ms. Terry Evans will speak on behalf of uh, the vic as the victim, but she'll speak in support. We have uh, Linda Sisson here in support. She's a friend. William Burley, who is the dad of the offender, and he would like to speak on his behalf. And Amanda LaCour, a niece who is here in support. All right, thank you. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. My name is Justin Young, DOC number 490512. Hey, Justin, my name is Brennan Kelsey. On the panel with me is Keith Jones and Tony Marabella. I'll explain the process to you, read some information to the record. We'll have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. We'll let the folks speak as they need to, and uh, you can respond and make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Justin Young, DOC number 490512, you're a second class offender, uh, habitual offender law, vehicular homicide, sensing date 118, 2008, 25 years, DOC, parole date 3-2-2020, not eligible for a good time, and parole uh, full term date 9-2-2032. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. So please answer, Mr. Keith Jones. Good morning, Mr. Young. Good morning, sir. Um, you, you present, quite frankly, what appears to be a pretty easy case for us. And, uh, and it would be a lot easier for me were it not for what you wrote. I, I appreciate your industry and uh, preparing your submission to us, uh, which you called your parole package. But um, part of what you wrote concerns me an awful lot. Uh, are you an alcoholic? Yes, sir. I, I would say I was an alcoholic that I had alcohol problems, sir. You had one? You had an alcohol problem? Well, you could, I would never be able to live like, as not an alcoholic. Through AANA, it's taught me that I will for, forever fight this battle with alcoholism. And I've learned that in order to defeat this, I have to seek my higher power. I have to work the steps. And I have to first admit that I was an alcoholic and I was powerless over alcohol. And that's what I'm doing, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's step one, of course. Uh, is admitting that. And, and here's where my concern is with what you wrote, Mr. Young. Um, you said that you were the designated driver and you decided to have a couple of drinks. Uh, and then you said, I realized that those few drinks that impaired me as I blew a 0.09%. Well, first of all, the truth is you, you blew a 0 .099, uh, not 0 .09. Uh, 
and and that was done, that was a two or three hours after the accident. Right. Police state police projected that your blood alcohol content was closer to point yeah. one two three or higher, and you knew that, didn't you? This afternoon, if you're going to be around. Yes, sir. Uh, I knew I had a point zero nine nine. Forgive me for point zero nine. And you and you knew that the state. Did you go to trial on this? Yes, sir. Okay, so you knew what the state police had testified, that there was evidence in the record that 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 test was given well after you'd had some time to get some alcohol out of your system, right? Yes, sir. Well, you know, it. What troubles me is that is that you sound like the guy that goes to trial on the DWI that swears he only had two beers and, uh, and that, that you're trying to excuse um, yourself from responsibility because you only had a couple of drinks, even though you were the designated driver. And um, I'm an alcoholic. I've been sober 31 years. And, and uh, people who minimize their drinking uh, and who are in the program worry me. If I were your sponsor, you'd worry me. And, and, uh, and, and that's not going to, it's not going to change my vote. It's just that I, I want to tell you that uh, minimizing what you did is a way of absolving yourself of responsibility. You've had to do a lot of time ex to accept that responsibility. And, and, uh, and I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you do that. Uh, let yourself accept what you did and that you're an alcoholic who will always be an alcoholic, as you said, who's going to live a sober life one day at a time. Okay. Yes, sir. I agree with you hundred percent. All right. Well, that, that, um, your letter caught my eye and now you know why, uh, because I, just so you know, I'm still going to meetings and, and, um, and I hope you will be when you're sober 31 years. So, um, I think uh, I, I frankly, because of the, the record I've gone through, I have no other questions for you. I, um, I understand, you understand the issue, you understand your treatment of it, how you need to live your life. Um, and, and we'll, uh, I'll have some conditions for you um, that will help you do that. Mr. So, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your uh, transition plan, Mr. Young. We grant you parole today. Where are you going to be living? What are you going to be doing? If I'm if I'm able to be granted parole today, I'll be living with my dad, Billy Burley, in home of Louisiana. And I will be working with his tree service, Burley Tree Removal. But my my goal is to actually get into a, the electrical field, which I have received uh, electrical trade through Baton Rouge Community College in electricity, as well as working for fleet operations here at State Police Barracks, up, upfitting uh, state police cars with emergency equipment, such as sirens, alarm systems. And I would like to further that when I go home. Does your dad drink? No, sir. He's against that 100%. <laughs> How long have you been going to AA meetings? I've been attending AA when I was at Avoyles. I attended AA there. And since I've been at the state police barracks, I've been attending AA, which is going on five years now, sir. That's all the questions I have. All right. Uh, we want to hear from Mr. Burley. I'm here. Go ahead. My name is... Uh, William Burley. Uh, I've been knowing Justin since he was 13 years old. Uh, I come to him through his, his dad had passed away and his mother 
had an alcohol problem. Uh, myself, I have never had, nor I do drink or tolerate it at all. Uh, to say a little bit about Justin Young and, and the 13 years I've been in prison with him, that he has changed tremendously from a, a young kid that, like you said earlier, wouldn't admit or want to shy away from uh, the responsibility. He's not that same man today. He is definitely uh, an upstanding young man that I believe that would be a great society, uh, great meaning to the society. Uh, I had the wherefore all to not only help him, but monitor him. Uh, I have uh, connections with the district attorney here in Terrebonne Parish and the sheriff's office, also in Lafouche Parish through my tree company. Uh, Justin will be living with me uh, and staying with me on a daily basis. Uh, guys, uh, I, I can't tell you how much that uh, this would mean for him to come home and be a part of family life again. Uh, I, I truly believe that he has uh, learned his lesson, and I, I don't believe that he'll ever be a, a problem. Uh, and, and I'm sure that we can uh, accomplish any goals that you guys set forward. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, now we'll hear from Ms. Terry Evans. I have wrote down my wrote down a few things. Um, I'm not a, I don't speak well in front of others, but I want to say good morning. And my name is Terry Evans, and I'm here with my daughters, Danielle and Courtney. I want to thank you for allowing me to speak on the behalf of my husband, which is a victim in this case, Daniel M. Evans. Dan was a very loving man. He was a servant of God who dedicated his life to helping others. His pride and joy were our daughters, whom he loved with all of his heart. We were married for 23 wonderful years. And over, over times, we, we had such a beautiful life. Dan proudly served the U.S. Army for 22 years, where he led many young soldiers, teaching them how their choices would affect others' lives. His strong belief in God led him to believe in second chances, about forgiveness and loving others more than himself. And today I'm here to speak on behalf to carry on his belief in forgiveness and second chances. I'm here to speak in support of Justin Young receiving parole after he has served almost 13 years of his 24 year sentence as results of events that occur on March 11th, 2006, the morning my husband went home to heaven. In 2006, Justin Young was immature, lost, selfish 19 year old who wasn't making good choices. He extremely made a bad choice that night to drink and drive underage, affected our lives permanently. It altered his path Justin's life would take and left his young son without a father to grow up with. There was no winners in this situation. A guilty verdict didn't change the loss we suffer, but Justin was given the chance to make a change and he has. We had the opportunity to meet Justin in person in November, 2019. After many years of waiting, Although throughout the death of my husband, the trial, the loss of the years, and even as we prepared to meet with Justin in person, I cling to a verb, verse in the Bible, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on, not on to your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. One may wonder why did we want to meet with him? We wanted to hear his story of the events on March 11th, see if he had changed at all, and see if his eyes, if he was remorseful. Let him know we have forgiven him and finally leave all this in the past. When we met him in November, we no longer saw the same young kid that we sat beside in the courtroom for months and months. Justin has matured over the past 13 years. He has became a Christian, 
He has gotten his education. He has taken class classes to better himself with anger and alcohol abuse. He has used ex his experience to help others with anger and alcohol abuse. He has used the experience to help others, especially fathers who have kids. He has learned a trade that he plans to use to secure a job when he is released. He's making wise choices. He is working to form a relationship with his son and he's letting my hus husband's death not to be in vain. When we met with husband, when we met with Justin, we learned for the first time that he listened to something, what we said at the sentence hearing many years ago. He took my husband's saying that we held so dear to us. You may not be able to change the world, but you can change the little part that you're in. And he chose to wrap his life around that saying. Justin has been trying to make his difference and plans to do even more when he's released. I am confident that he will take this tragedy and make a difference in a smart part that he is in. I hope he uses his story to stop other young people from making bad choices and that he has the opportunity to become a great role model for his son. Justin, this is your God's given second choice chance. I pray you make the most of it and you make the difference. A verse I hope you carry with you is Joshua 1, 9, which happens to be my husband's favorite verse. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Keep your eyes on him, Justin, and he will be with you. Thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to speak on the behalf of my husband, Daniel Evans, and my daughters. We are Christians and we truly believe God has sent his son to die on the cross to forgive our sins and truly believe that God sent his son to die on the cross, I'm sorry, to forgive our sins, that he has done the same for Justin. We have forgiven Justin as well and pray he has the opportunity to make a difference in the community when he's released. Justin, I love the ribbon. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Thank you so much. Would the staff, please, the barracks like to make a statement? Yes, good morning again. I'm Riss from State Police Barracks. Justin's been with us for about uh, five years. Uh, his primary assignment, work assignment, is uh, fleet operations. He's become very skilled. Uh, through training that he's received there. Um, he has uh, participated and continues to participate in the educational programs here, uh, as well as has completed programs, uh, including got received his GED from, uh, from the walls. Uh, he's uh, seeking, he's pursuing his uh, bachelor's of science at Ashland uh, as of right now. Uh, and he's also received some uh, training in electrical uh, I heard him say earlier he intends to participate uh, to pursue that. Um, he's had no disciplinary record uh, reports here. Um, we, th we feel like he's an excellent candidate. Thank you. All right, Justin, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. First, I would like to say that I take full responsibility for my action for going drinking that night and causing the death of Mr. Daniel Evans. I was an irresponsible kid. And my number one goal since coming to prison was to change my life. I've seen so many times where prison could make the worst out of you or make the best. I've decided to take the situation and be the best person I could be. I know that I caused so much pain to Ms. Evans, Danielle and Courtney, and I will be forever in debt to you and Mr. Evans. My number one goal when I go home talk to kids, juveniles, go to juvenile detention centers, boys and girls clubs, so I can reach them so I may change their lives so they don't go down the same path I went down. I am not that same 19 year old kid that I was. I am a better man due to everything I've learned since I've been incarcerated. I thank y'all for y'all time. I thank you, Mr. Evans, for your support. And I thank the parole board. All right, kind of prepared to vote. Yep. Mr. Jones. Mr. Young, good for you. 
Good for you. You've done well. And, and, and I, and you're right. Um, we, we see it all the time. Guys that go downhill uh, when they're locked up and, uh, and occasionally we see guys like you. So, um, so how long have you been sober? I've been sober now for 13, ever since I've been incarcerated, 13 and a half years, sir. Okay. Um, my vote is to grant your parole. Uh, the conditions um, are that I, I want you to go to um, AA meetings. First of all, on the outside, if you were going to meetings on the outside and you were, uh, when people first get sober, we, we want them, to, the best idea is to go to 90 meetings in 90 days. And, uh, and I want you to, um, to think about your, think of yourself as newly sober. You don't, you don't, um, you're not, of course, but, but, uh, but when you get to the outside, it's a new experience. You're back. Uh, it's a lot harder to drink where you are than it is out here. And, and so I want you to go, uh, now, AA meetings now are on Zoom, just like this. There are hundreds of choices any hour of the day, meetings you can go to. Um, once you go to them physically, there aren't as many, but there's still plenty of meetings available to you. Uh, while they're on Zoom, I want you to go to a meeting every day. It only takes an hour. It's easy to get signed on to them. And, uh, and I want you to supply your parole officer with a very brief statement of what meeting it was and what was discussed. Very brief. Uh, I just want the parole officer to have something from you that, that shows that you've been doing what we want you to do. Uh, after you can go back outside, I want you to go to three AA meetings a week. You, um, you'll make friends there who are sober and you can use some friends like that. We all can. Uh, and you'll get a sponsor. So when you get a sponsor, I want you to supply his name to the parole officer. Um, and you'll, um, you'll get help working the steps, which as you know, is a wonderful way to live a, an honest life. So, um, finally, I want you to do four hours of community service every month. The things that you talked about, speaking to people, helping people, um, every, every alcoholic has a different bottom. Some, for many, that bottom is six feet under, um, and, and your bottom was a tragic one, but I'm glad you recognize it. Good luck to you. Thank you. Mr. Marabella. Mr. Young, it appears that uh, you have done some very significant things. Uh, I would uh, certainly like to acknowledge the compassion and forgiveness of Ms. Terry Evans and her daughters here today. What an honor to your husband, ma'am, for you to have the compassion in your heart that you have. Mr. Young, you've obviously earned it. You've worked hard. Uh, I think that you should heed all of the advice that Mr. Jones just gave you because it's critical that you continue on the path that you are uh, for the same reasons as, all, as uh, indicated by Mr. Jones and under the same conditions, I will vote to grant your parole. Thank you, sir. All right, you have two votes to grant your parole today. Um, again, thank everybody for being here. Thank Ms. Evans for, for her uh, articulate, just compassionate speech. It's just that uh, is, uh, that's difficult to do. It shows you how strong ladies, you, all of you got, y'all are. Um, but I'll vote to uh, grant your parole today as well for the good work that you've done, the uh, low law and score, positive institutional record, um, the, the so victim support, and, and all your support. Uh, your your stipulations will be as stated. You'll have a curfew from 10P to 6A, uh, unless you're working or at church. You'll um, do AA daily on Zoom and provide the uh, summary to your PI. And, and, and then when it's available on the street, you'll go three times a week uh, and provide a sponsor's name to your PI as well. I, if it's okay, Mr. Jones, I like for him to do eight hours a month of community service. Uh, and that gives you an opportunity to give back to the community, do the things you want to speak to at-risk youth, and you can make a difference. Just, you know, uh, out of something terrible can, can come something great. You'll have an opportunity to make a difference. Uh, and, Mr. Uh, Kelsey, 
yeah, yeah. pardon me, for the record, I, on my vote sheet, I had said curfew from nine to six, which is what we normally do, of course. I have no problem with 10 to six. Right, I got you. Well, that, that's what it'll be. So the stipulations that I stated, do you understand the stipulations? Yes, sir. All right, so your parole, uh, three uh, votes to grant, your parole's been granted. Good luck to you. Thank you all thank, very much. Thank everybody for being a part of the process. We're at State Police Barracks. will be signing out 1012. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I said here, I believe. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and be sure to comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts.